So DC animation has a vast amount of different continuities. And with that, it makes it harder to find who stands at the top of the hierarchy and power for what's been animated. Some people believe it's the demon Trigon, which isn't too much of a surprise considering he was beating pretty much everybody in the universe. You could also argue Superman from the Justice League Unlimited universe, which is an entirely separate universe from the current animated universe right now. See, in the final episode of Justice League Unlimited, the Boy Scouts stopped holding back. And at this point, Darkseid really didn't have much against him anymore. This is impressive because Metron, the god of knowledge, considers Darkseid a threat to the entire universe. But every one of these characters and many more are all overshadowed by one being. And his story begins in Justice League Season 2, Episode 3. Now this episode takes place in the Justice League Unlimited verse, and it starts off with the basic hero vs villain fight with Lex Luthor losing to the Justice League. Issue is, it doesn't really end well for Lex Luthor at all. Now with the broken suit, Lex Luthor goes to Professor Ivo's laboratory to fix it. But when he gets there, the creature he sees is a bit unusual. The android known as Amazo standing right in front of him protecting Professor Ivo. Now the real beginning for Amazo starts when Luthor manipulates him into getting fuel to revive his broken suits. Now there's one other thing I need. Fuel. On this journey for Fuel, it is our first time we've seen the feature that led Amazo to greatness. The ability to adapt. After successfully stealing the Fuel, Hawkgirl pulls up on him. The only issue being is that he can steal her powers and adapt to her. Now after this, he obviously defeats her, but this is an important piece to keep in mind why he's so strong. You see, when Lex Luthor figured out he can adapt to people, he manipulated him to fight the Justice League. When fighting the Justice League, right off the bat, he adapts to Wonder Woman. Emma! You forgot to mention he's as strong as I am. He wasn't like that before. After her was then the Green Lantern, Jon Stewart. And the most scariest of them all is probably Wally West to flash by taking his speed. But the most important and potent upgrade is when Superman came. Now even with all these stolen powers and abilities, it wasn't enough to take down Superman because he was putting a beat down on him. But when it was all said and done, he got one good glimpse at him, making him able to steal his powers and it all went downhill from there. In the next episode, with Amazo gaining new abilities, we see Lex Luthor has to prepare in case the android were to ever go against him. You see, the android can adapt to things, but if his brain were to be exploded, he wouldn't even be powered on in the first place. This is exactly what Professor Ivo had in mind when creating Amazo. A button present in case anything goes wrong, and boom, there goes his brain. Now the android did go against Lex Luthor. This happened when he took the abilities of Martian Manhunter, accessed Lex's mind, and seen that he was manipulating him. So at this point, he pressed the button and you would think that is the end, there is no more android. Until we see this. Now it's my turn. Amazo once again adapts. Even with his own weakness used against him, he transcends his own limitation. At this point, Amazo has become so advanced that he tells the League they are nothing to him and so is Lex Luthor. None of you has anything to offer me now. So when the sky opens up, it is our first time when we see Amazo ascend himself into a cosmic state. At this point, he travels across the universe and John says he goes wherever gods go. But all this is is a new beginning for an even more powerful state that Amazo would eventually get. Now after a very long time of waiting, we finally get the episode called The Return. This episode starts with Martian Manhunter and Jon Stewart talking to the Lantern Corps about an issue, but while they were speaking, they were widely interrupted by a Mazo coming back very fast. But to the Lanterns, it was unknown that that was a Mazo, so they send the corpse to stop the blast. That being said, when they formed a whole shield to stop it, it failed miserably, and even planet Oa was negged. Now the planet he just destroyed was planet Oa, which is where the Lanterns live, but that was only the start of Amazo's chaos. You see, after this event, the Justice League sent multiple heroes in different areas to patrol Amazo when he comes there. At the top of the patrol, we've seen Superman, Orion, and many other powerful beings. And from above, we see Amazo heading straight to them head on. And this is how it went. Yes, 
all those heroes were just easily defeated by the hands of Amazo. That being said, there is still a second pair of defense that the League put out to stop Amazo from getting to Earth. But yet again, it doesn't go too well. So there's a clear pattern here. Every form of defense that the league is putting out is getting destroyed. Now after Amazo utterly embarrasses the second line of defense, he goes on to the third one on ground. This lineup consists of one Roman Steel, Wally, and others, and yet is taken down by one humongous blast from the android. Yeah, that was your last lamp of defense. After that, there was nothing to stop the android. Now, if you're wondering this whole reason why Amazo is coming back and causing all this chaos, it's because he wanted revenge on Lex Luthor for manipulating him on doing bad things. You see, Amazo really isn't a bad guy. The only reason why he was fighting the League is because they were in his way and preventing him from his objective. That being said, after he defeated all the heroes, Lex Luthor was free to go after. But Lex was prepared and was with the Atom. When the android came, he went to a sub atomic universe making himself very small. But whether you're in a subatomic universe or not, the android will find you. Amazo forces himself inside, picks up Lex Luthor and tells him, no matter how large or small a universe may be, he is always welcome there. We also learn Amazo can destroy everything with a single thought, as well as being immortal, but because of all that power, it makes him question the point of life, which is what Lex Luthor used to his advantage to escape death from the android. Lex Lex explains that the point of living is to see where it would lead to, and that each person should decide by themselves what to do with their life, regardless of what it means in the grand scheme of things. And with that, Amazo decides to spare him his life, go with Dr. Fate on the path to knowledge, until episode 11 called Wake the Dead, where Amazo gets utterly embarrassed by Solomon Grundy amped with chaos magic. Then he says he needs to leave again so he can figure out how to transcend this limitation, but we never see him again. After the first season of Justice League Unlimited, there is no newer information or clarification in the next two seasons. I checked through all the wikis, forums, Quora, Reddit, nothing. So I used the method that I usually use for other shows. You see, some cartoons actually have spin-off comics that directly tie into the series. Shows like Teen Titans Go, Regular Show, and even Adventure Time are all prime examples. So I checked if there was anything that could help me, and lo and behold, Justice League Infinity. Now, if you still aren't convinced that Amazo is the strongest, especially after that Grundy instance, this comic will surely change your mind. As if we didn't already know, they verify the fact that he has godlike abilities and the fact that he has a name that most people fear to say. So the essential basis of this comic is the continuation of Amazo's life after the Grundy experience. I guess they just decided to put it in a comic instead of animate it. Moving on though. So with the power able to wipe out an entire solar system, Amazo once again travels through the infinite universe and ends up fighting a cosmic gateway to the place called the Mirror Room. The Mirror Room is kind of like this cosmic place that's a reflection to all universes. Amazo was kind of losing himself inside of there and in turn was affecting the realm. And with the damage he done, the multiverse was affected, which pretty much made people from entirely separate universes transport into a different one. Superman met Superman D, Ultraman met Lois Lane, and Diana met Darkseid in a universe where Darkseid dated Wonder Woman. But you get the gist, the multiverse was messed up. All the damage Amazo has done and is doing is tearing apart time and space and all of creation. But with all this damage, still nothing could compare to the chaos that comes next. So in the second to last issue of Justice League Infinity, the Justice League meets the enemy who's been manipulating Amazo this entire time. Amazo's evil counterparts. This version of Amazo is far more powerful than his regular self. In fact, infinitely more stronger, one shotting him and the Justice League. This Amazo was known as Amazo 2 and he was constantly evolving. But it wasn't always chaos and destruction for the second android. You see, back on his Earth when this version of Amazo was created, he didn't have anybody showing him compassion or talking him out of what he was doing. As a matter of fact, humanity feared him and tried to destroy him instead. And at that point, he fought back. He destroyed his whole planet, then moved to space and destroyed many other foreign planets until he stopped by Apocalypse and faced Darkseid. But even with the might of Apocalypse and his last resort being the ultimate anti-life equation, but Amazo II simply absorbed it all. He then destroyed Apocalypse and then destroyed his own universe. And that very 
scary moment was the birth of a creature that would soon destroy the multiverse. So with this evil Amazo being Amazo's counterpart, it makes him more attached to him and wants to stop him from being corrupted. That being said, it actually throws out the corruption for a moment. But then he snapped again, erased Amazo, and knew that he wanted to destroy the infinite multiverse. Amazo the second was done, with what seemed like a single thought obliterated everything in existence. With the unlimited verse being destroyed, this would mean Amazo would have ended all of duality, destroyed places that transcend time, the author also confirms that he destroyed the concepts of time and space. The only things left in existence were five Justice League members floating inside the void. When Martian Manhunter probed his mind in all directions, there was no sign of any consciousness, and the only reason why the League is alive is for Amazo 2's own entertainment. He evolved to such a point where he embodied the entire anti-life equation and nobody could stop him. But the original Amazo's main quality is to evolve as well. Surely he can't adapt to somebody infinitely more powerful than him, right? Well, not so much. You see, when Amazo was destroyed by the evil android, his being adapted, evolving himself to where he's capable of one-shotting Amazo 2. Now the heroes remade everything using the life equation. Everything went back to normal other than a couple speculations from separate heroes on what happened. And honestly, as expected from Amazo, he remade the admins from his counterparts, but this time made sure that they went on the path for knowledge together. And that's it for the video. You guys let me know if you think there's anybody else from DC Animation that's stronger.